All right, all right, all right. We just jump right in. Yep. Hello, Mark. How are we're, you doing? Yeah, we're here. We are together. Um, I promise not to you on this episode. Really? Oh, you caught me on a bad day last night. Um, it was a, it's a long day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I told someone today that if my life was a vehicle, I'm driving the hell out of this Ferrari right now. Bro, no <laughs> doubt, no doubt. So just say. I'm like an F-150 with 358,000 miles on it. That's actually a real thing. That's a real good. thing, yeah. <laughs> um, so in our podcast, we basically decided to switch some things up. Yeah, try some new yeah. stuff. Segments. We talked about Bingo. it a couple of weeks ago. Bingo. And so a um, little bit of a segment this week is history with Mike. Yeah. And we also wanted to bring up just one of the ideas, because you and I, we eat out a lot. Here in Sussex County, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. we do a lot of eating out mm-hmm. and got some. We meet a lot of people there, have some good places. Yeah, I want to bring that up. A little, I wanted to bring that up just a little bit. Yeah, some you, things I've learned. I have an idea of a place I'd like to discuss. Go ahead. Well, it's 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 part of the Finns uh, chain over here in the Sussex County, in the Bethany, in yeah. Frankfurt, yeah, and in the West Fenwick, I guess would be better. Um, there's a new. It's called JR's, and it's it's not new. It used to be. There was another restaurant. It's over on Coastal Highway, um, and it's part of the Finns family, and it is a Coastal Carolina menu. Really? Yes. So where is this? Um, it is right just north of the uh, the, the, the country store. Really? Oh, I know what you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, it's, it's on the same side. It's on Bay Side. Yeah. What's the Seaside the country, country Store? store. It's a whole lot of country, but a whole lot more. Um, yep. Yeah, it's just yeah. north of that. It's in a little strip. Um, got a great bar, great setup. It's an open kitchen, so you can see your stuff being cooked. Yeah. Um, Coastal Carolina type menu. What does that mean? Well, the, to me, that means fresh fish. Um, they got a great jambalaya. You would love. Really? It. Yes. Great sh- uh, shrimp and grits. Hmm. Um, I'm gonna come back to that and talk a little bit about that. Hush puppies. Really? Bingo. You know the other place I the other, I went and ate somewhere the other day because um, we'll t- we'll talk about why we ate I ate there the other day but I went someplace and ate and they had something very interesting called sweet potato hush puppies yes uh yep and I'm those in, were I'm intrigued and they were like coated with um, brown sugar and cinnamon okay yeah it was pretty much it was like a dessert um, I ordered them as an appetizer for the table yeah. Yeah, I didn't share them. No. Anti-sharing. That was an anti-sharing when person. You find something good like that. Yeah. yeah, I'm not sharing it. You know what you never hear if you go out to eat when someone basically, if someone really likes their food, they don't say, "Hey, taste this," because there's a limited amount. Oh. You know that's a rule that I have in my household. If, if someone says, says "Hey, taste this," taste this yeah. no. no. These are some rules. Hey, these are some rules that Fung Shui audience should listen to. If someone says, "Hey, smell this," no. No. If someone says taste this, just move on. Be very skeptical. Yeah, that's it. Is that only with solids, or would it be with beverages as well? Um, I don't know. Uh, that's a good question. Uh, because I can see it experimenting with a new cocktail, and somebody saying, "Hey, try this," and be like, "The that's effervescent." The friends that we go out with to drink, um, the the friends and family, yeah, the plan, yeah, they don't really offer up any of their cocktails to taste this. They don't really say, hey, taste this. You'll like because it. Because the, the, the shoe is on the other foot. Okay. Or the foo is on the other shoot. Yeah. Um, because we're generally the ones making it. Yes. And sometimes consuming it, whereas other people we know are 100% of the time consuming. Yes, they are. Yeah. So I have a thing about basically drinking out of my, um, drinking out of my cup. Yeah. Funny thing, we're going to bring this up just real quick. Yeah. And whenever I was little, I was scarred for life by someone I'm going to refer to hypothetically as my Aunt Peggy. Okay? Purely just hypothetical. Purely hypothetical. Just she want to let you know if she's out or, there. May or may yeah. not exist. And so I had a problem of drinking out of everyone else's drink. And it was Christmas. And I went to greet Jean. Like um, yeah, no. I was probably about seven, something like that. Okay. And so I went and grabbed a I went and grabbed a drink off of my grandparents' uh-huh. counter and drank it. And my Aunt Peggy um freaked out, said, Oh my gosh, there was a roach that just crawled in that. And that's not a good thing. Well, 
it basically stopped me. It stopped me from drinking out of anybody else's drink. Was it serious or was she just saying that? She was just saying that. I don't know. She's, I mean, my How hypothetically aunt, uh, aunt Peggy, yeah. I don't know. I'll probably say, I hate this. Hypothetically, if she did exist, yeah. okay, I'm probably thinking she's 87. What just happened to the light? Um, Jesus. <laughs> yeah, that was my Aunt Peggy. <laughs> uh, hypothetically, my Aunt Peggy might be 87. And yeah. so if she did exist. Yeah. But that's a hypothetical. I'm sure she doesn't exist. Um, if she did exist, she'd be my cousin Chris's mother. <laughs> just, oh, just to let you know. Bolts and Hose. Yeah, that's it from Bolts and Hose podcast. Look them up. Patriot Bolts and Hose. Um, so anyway, I came up with a deal. I don't drink out of anybody else's cup. Don't like anybody drinking out of mine. Yeah. Except for one person is the only person that I allowed this to happen. Yeah. And her name is, you you're, you Little know her person. friends, Tanya. She's the only person. I don't know why. I'm scared of her, I guess. So actually, That's Fran, yeah, Fran, who our aerospace engineer technology, shout out to Wallops Island. Our astronaut. Um, yeah, it's his wife. Yeah. Yeah, she's like a sister to me. For some reason, I'm scared of her, and she allows me to drink out of her. I allow her to drink out of my glass. Every She'll say, let me try that, and I don't say no. So, hold on. I'm just going to basically send that to voicemail. Um, thanks for calling in. Yeah, thanks for calling in, right Aunt thanks. Peggy. Don't call in. All right. So, real quick before we get yeah. to your before we get to your um, history, lesson. history lesson. Yes. I want to talk a little bit about some of the restaurants and stuff that we go to over here. Yeah. And that is that once once every other week, Lady Fung and I have this. Um, we actually have a date night, and we go to different places it's date night. Story. Just me and her. It's a great idea. Yeah, just to, you know, keep the place fresh. Yeah, keep it up. You know, date yeah. date the woman that basically I started dating a long time ago. Yeah, long time. yeah. So I started basically. I decided to as I go to these different restaurants, I was going to order the same thing at every restaurant. And then I was going to basically rate that and find out where's the best place to eat this item. Okay. Okay. So one of the places we originally went, for those of you in the uh, Sussex County area, is Good Earth. Good Earth Market is in the, right. is that in Ocean View? It's Ocean View, yeah. Yep. And it's a very nice, it's a very nice, uh, a little bit of a DeFebos. If you don't know what DeFebos is, it's got a market type deal in there. But they have a great chef. So I decided to start ordering Shrimp and grits. It's a winner. Yep. And so I decided I'm going to basically find the best place to eat shrimp and grits. Yeah. So we went to a number of places and I keep getting shrimp and grits okay. just to take and try to remember how's this rating. Uh -huh. And so, so far I will let you know that good earth is probably it's way up there on shrimp and grits. How many places have you gone to like this? I think about five, Okay. five or six in our area. So we started getting yep. significant. And I get, maybe I'm going to get too little picky, but good earth actually has the right amount of grits, cheesy grits that are not basically watered down with the sauce. Yeah. Shrimps cooked well. Yeah. Spinach is steamed well. It's a good, it's a good deal. It sounds healthy. Yeah, it is. It's pretty healthy. Yeah. Love it. And so we went there. I've been to a couple of places over in Rehoboth, had theirs. And we went to a place. Um, is it Blue Coast? Is that the place that's over uh like across from Matt's uh, uh fish camp? On, 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 yep. Yeah. We went there and had that the other day. And here's what I'll tell you about that place. First of all, I'm going to come back to restaurants in a little bit and servers. Um, but the grits were not really a, a, a lot of grits there. But the shrimp, there's a way to cook shrimp. Yeah. Those people that know how to cook shrimp, two minutes is maximum yeah. on cooking shrimp. You, you can, can overcook over Yeah, and they become rubber. Yeah. And so I will tell you that Blue Coast had the best tasting shrimp, perfectly cooked. Really? Yep. So absolutely love there. But if I was going to rate today, um, I would pretty much rate, I would go ahead and put um, Good Earth is my number one place. Nice. Now, the other day we went to another place and I don't think we ate, I ate chili there. I had Texas chili at Papa, at Papa Grande. Yes. And the reason I want to bring up Papa Grande is because if you're looking for a chili that won the Fire and Ice Cook-Off, yes. it won the Fire and Ice Cook-Off chili champion. It's a little bit, it's got a bite. It's yeah. got a bite. But I'm telling you, you know, it's probably one of the best chilies that I've eaten at a restaurant. Who knows? Hands That's down. Awesome. Yep. But. Where are you going? I was going to go immediately go in to say, not only is the food good at some of these places, but you and I have a tendency of also befriending some of the staff. Yeah. 
And so there's some places that I would go back, try different foods, just because the staff and the wait staff there, unbelievable. I agree. And so if you're looking for a great place to go, meet some staff that's great. I mean, they excellent. Papa Grande's, Jake from State Farm. But he's not from State Farm. He's not from State Farm. No, but he's but, from Papa Grande's. Yeah, Jake from Papa Grande's can save you 15% if you bundle your food. And so there we go. But I'm just letting you guys know that Jake, over the top he's right there. He's a good there. kid. He is a good guy. Great sense of humor. He remembers this. He, he knows the podcast. Up. Yep. Yeah, he's a listener, and he... Um, Attention to detail, because here's the thing people don't know about you, I know about you. Yeah. Is your pet peeve is you like your sweet tea. Yep. And you like it. You don't want to be waiting with an empty glass. Jake knows that. Yes. And so. he, he takes care of that. The other thing, don't forget, too, Jake was doing his first night of bartending the other night. He was yep. trained as a bartender, and he was being trained by Luke. Yep. Luke's another good dude in there. Yep. Who who takes care of us when we're in there. There, Papa Grande's got a good staff of people yeah. there. And the, so the two managers are fantastic. People. Excellent. Yep. Yeah. So just want to say shout out to Papa Grande's. If you're looking for a good shrimp and grits, I would definitely suggest going over to Good Earth or Blue Coast. You're going to take some perfectly uh, cooked shrimp. Blue Coast, great place for a yep. date. Yeah, great place for a date. Because you get the sunset over the bay. Yep. Yeah, good place. Great place for a date. A little bit more upscale. Yeah. Uh, but great place for a date. That's, you know. So recently, what's your number one place you would go to as far as restaurant kicks out? Oh, I know you got one that basically it seems to be your new go to place outside of JR's. What, you, what, what do you think? The what's the place that's over in um it's in this side of Fenwick? Oh, Fins. Fins. Yeah. Well, yeah. JR's, right. JR's, right? Yeah. Fins that used to be uh Smitty McGee's. Yep. On on Lighthouse Road. Yep. Fen yeah, in Fenwick. We've gone over there a lot. Those guys like, are seem very nice. Too, right. Yep. Billy's the kid over there. He's the oyster shucker. He's in there all the time. He asks, yep. if we're not together, he asks me about you every time. So what I would tell our Feng Shui audience out there is what Mike and I are telling you is we live over here. We eat out a lot. Yeah. And so. Um, People look at the screen right now going, no shit, Mike eats out a lot. Yeah, me too. Um, I'm going to say it's the it's the medicine. Yeah. Yeah, the medicine basically yeah. told me to gain weight. So anyway, what I will tell you, though, is there's some great restaurants over here. And don't get in the habit of going to just your typical, you know, hey, this is my vacation. Let's go to the same place over and over right. again. There's some great restaurants over here that people miss. On your horizon. Yeah. Good Earth is a place that can easily be missed because you're passing it as you go through. You know what the difference is, too? One of the things you have to look for here is there are tourist-driven restaurants and then there are restaurants that are different kind of driven. Okay. Yep. Where the quality of food is different. The, the quality of service is different. You go to some of these places that are just pumping, you know, tourists through during the summer, quality of food sometimes slips. And I, I think that happens more down in ocean city than it happens up this yep. way. I'll give you another one too. And this is, I, I love steam shrimp. Yep. Love steam shrimp. If you tell me, Mike, we're going out for a natural light and a steamed shrimp, I'm your man. So the best steamed shrimp in Sussex County. Where's that? Boathouse. Really? Consistently for the last three years, they have the best steamed shrimp. Because like you were talking about, cooked properly, cooked properly. Wow. Yeah. A lot of people don't really pay attention to that. They just basically think, hey, we'll throw them in there. We'll steam them forever. No. You got to be perfectly cooked. couple tricks. Yep. Um, first one, gotta add beer, yeah. Another one, add lemon juice. Um, there was another. Oh, the last place I would throw out there is Yellow Fins, who's over in um, where's what's that little shopping center Selby. over there in Selbyville? They opened a new place over near um, Cedar, which is over on the on the Louis on the Bethany side. Mm -hmm. That place is over the top. And so yeah. their their uh, tuna taco tuna nachos tuna nachos yeah uh, it's over the top if yeah. you want to basically go over there you have to look for yellow fins it's over there it's it's one of Lady Fung's favorite places yeah. to go Pan it'll be seared yep. sushi grade tuna on tacos yeah with very light chips the chips are there yes yep. so that is your that is your restaurant review locally locally for Fung and Shui today we know what we're talking about yeah and we basically eat out a lot. Yep. Um, we've been put on a, I think we've been put on a uh, budget. Yeah, we've been put on a budget for that. Yeah. So just want to make sure we shout out to there because I know the summer's coming. Restaurants are basically going to be picking up. Definitely go over there. There's a lot that we'll probably talk about at other restaurants, 
But I'm telling you, shrimp and grits, good earth. Uh, tuna nachos, yellow fins. I would also pretty much go over to like JR's, like Mike said, excellent place. There's a bunch of places we'll probably talk about. See Pat. Pat's the manager at JR's. Yep. Good dude. Yep. And go over there and have Steve here for the boathouse. We might go over there later. Yes, sir. I think so. Yep. There we go. All right. So without any further ado, okay. I know we wanted to basically discuss. Um, I know we wanted to discuss some things such as uh, I'm going to basically do a couple of things here while you're telling me. Okay. History of. Uh, of, of the, our area right now. yes yes some so some mind-blowing history things that we got that i had to look up for you for my assignment and um i'm a history buff as you know a lot of people may or may not know but did you know that uh, archaeologists have found artifacts of the indigenous peoples here that go back as far as ten thousand to fourteen thousand years ago in sussex county yes here on the delmarva which that kind of blew my mind. And it's the Nanakoke and Lenape Indians or indigenous pe persons that they attribute those artifacts to that long, that far back. Wow. But the, the Sussex County that we are more familiar with, obviously um, the first settlement, the first European settlement here in on the Delmarva in Delaware was in 1631. And it was in Lewis. Even back then, they were arguing, is it Lewis? Is it Lewis? Is it Lewis? Is it Lewis? 1631? 1631. It was, uh, it was done by the Dutch. They were the first to set up shop there, and it was a, it was as a whaling colony. Really? Yeah. In this area? In this area. Yeah, the whales right off the shore and stuff like that. Yeah. So, so that's 1631. Um, some other interesting stuff. 1609. Henry Hudson actually crossed into Rehoboth Bay. Really? Yeah. Huh. Yep. Then 1613, Cornelius J. Stand by dispatch. Cornelius Jacob, Jacobson May, who was a Dutch navigator, crossed into the bay. And he's the first person to name both Cape May and Cape Henlopen. That's 1613. Huh. In 1664, the British take over. Um, and there, I, I didn't know anything about this war, but there was a war called the Anglo-Dutch War that took place in 1674, where the uh, the Dutch tried to take back this area, and the English uh, won. You know, and so they're still finding. They found artifacts and everything about all this stuff that's here. Yeah. That's just the history and stuff that's here. Yeah. You never, I never hear anything about this. Right. So you, mm -hmm. you're going back to pre pre colonial times, obviously, yep. right? The 1600s, though. Um, 1789, Delaware becomes the first state to sign the uh, the, the Constitution. Um, and that how come it says first state on my license right, plate? Right. And actually, Lewis claims to be the first city in the first state. Really? Yes. Oh. Huh. Um, did you know that in 1813, as part of the War of 1812, that the Brits, the British Navy, bombarded Lewis? British. The city of Lewis, not like some guy named Lewis. Yeah. But they shot cannonballs and tried to blow Lewis up. Really? It was British. Yeah. British. Then, as, as we talk about colonial times, perhaps the most famous colonial Delawarean is Caesar Rodney. Uh, I've heard of him. Okay. There's an institute that bears his name. Yes. Now, Caesar Rodney signed the Declaration of Independence. Yeah. Now, for those people out there who are interested in history, something that we were never taught as kids growing up, there's literature out there that you can find about what happened to the families of the men who signed the Declaration of Independence. The British captured yeah. a lot of them. Wives, children, family members, some of them over in England, some of them here in America. They were hung. They were imprisoned. They were murdered as a result of the you know guys like Caesar Rodney signing the Declaration of Independence. John Hancock, you know those type of guys. And um, I don't. I think people take that for granted that these guys way back then were so dedicated to the idea of individual freedom and living, being able to live in a free world that they knew that once they signed that document, they were going to be labeled as traitors 
there was a cost to it, and the and the, the you know the penalty for treason was first of all they all became immediately became criminals in the eyes of the right. king, but you know they subject to be hanged, but their families were killed, and, and you never think about that, that for us to have our freedoms right now, sign the Declaration of Independence, everything else, families were tortured, captured, killed. For what those guys right. did. What the, that's how big that was. Something as simple as this. Yep. But it's what it symbolized and what it meant. And I think we all take that for granted. Huh. I think we all take that for granted. A um, little bit about Caesar Rodney. Um, he, he, he was from Dover. He fought during the French and Indian War. Um, he was a member of the Continental Congress. He was actually the fourth person to be president of Delaware. There was a president of he Delaware? President of Delaware. I don't prior, know about prior, Texas. Bingo. Yeah. Prior to the signing of mm-hmm. you know, the Constitution and, and the Declaration of Independence, all that stuff, and the 13 colonies becoming America, there was a president of Delaware, and he was the fourth guy to do that. Um, and he was president of Delaware during the American Revolution. And and a little smaller known fact about him is you cruise around this area and you see the blue and yellow road signs that indicate neighborhoods around here. Yep. And there's a little character sig- dig- you know, at the top who's riding a horse. It has a little hat thing. Yes, that yep. is Caesar Rodney. Oh, huh. interesting. Right. So Caesar Rodney, and did you find out what happened to his family? His, fa- I think his family was safe because behind. They were behind what would be American lines and when they were never captured. And I, you know, I, wow. I'm wrong about that, but I don't know how far down the line. I know there were guys who lost their sons. Yeah. Like the, not just their sons that may have been young adults, you know, cause adulthood back then was probably 15, 16. More or people calling, calling in. It's that interesting. I don't understand um, that. I think um, it wasn't just adult sons, like, you know, children. They were small, small kids. Yeah, little kids were were killed by the British over the guys over the people who signed the Declaration of Independence. Wow, that's just brutal. Yeah, um, it's a brutal time. I think it is. It's strange. I know that we had talked about the fact that I was listening to a couple of autobiographies, and I'm currently in the middle of Winston Churchill. But it's sort of the same thing about the. You never think about those guys that during the um, French and Indian War. Um, during the French, during that war, during the establishment of our country and everything, and I'm thinking about all the stuff that I'm reading about Texas and everything's connected to that. It is, um, interesting how much that even the people that didn't go fight that stood up, those politicians that did that, yeah. it, there was a cost to our freedom, yeah. what we have right now. And this, the sad part about the reason I thought it would be interesting for us to discuss some history and everything that you've got here is that. I think it's, I think it's missed on the the generation right now that's not paying attention to our history and what took place when was there. I agree, with you. and I think part of it is is the damn is is the damn phones. Yep, the and, one I'm on right now. Yes, well, it has the answers to everything. Um, look, I, I, I'm not fooling anybody when they when I say that I was a good student in high school or college. I was not. Um, I have done more reading as an as a thirty something adult and on and learned more then than I than I think I ever learned in high school or college. But uh people people need it's it's stuff you should you should know it. You should know it as an American. Yeah, I think that again, I think that it's something that I wonder if my grandkids are gonna know they, all of the stuff that takes place. Yeah, because they'll end up Listening to you? Yeah, because I'm going to tell them. What will it take to convince you the P320 is the most advanced striker-fired pistol? Could the light, crisp trigger spark the epiphany? How about a total custom fit, not just a replaceable backstrap? Would safe takedown without pulling the trigger make you believe? Or will it be yet another of its innovations? Truth is, you won't fully understand why the P320 is the first striker pistol worthy of the SIG name until you've fired it for yourself. Experience the evolution. Hi. Hold on. I think hey. we just got someone joined into us. Did she, just, <laughs> did she just flip us off? No, she's looking. She's all music festivaled up. Unbelievable. Yeah, look- 
Unbelievable. Who is that? Because that's not our alley. <laughs> I know, right? Yes, it is. Listen to her, her laugh, and that's our alley. So our Fung and Sway audience, we are now joined by the third the third leg of our stool. Yes, the asset. <laughs> Allie, the asset. And so, oh, yeah. sorry. Allie is on location. Allie, you want to share a little bit about where you're on Allie, location? Where are you? Where in the world is Allie? I'm on location uh, in St. Petersburg, Florida. Really? Wow. And, and you're, at a, you're at a reggae concert, are you not? Yes. I'm trying to flip my camera around. Hold on. There okay. you go. All right. Doesn't look very crowded right now. But the, yeah, it looks relaxed. Oh, but it is. Oh, okay. What did you say, Doug? It looks relaxed there, doesn't it? It looks like chill. Oh, there's the um, crowd. It is. Um, I did come home yesterday with my hair smelling of a certain lettuce. So that was interesting. The devil's lettuce? The devil's lettuce, yes. Mm, cannabis sativa? It was, it, it's er, it's very herb, it's really herby looking it's there. Schedule one controlled dangerous substance. Yeah. So I'm going to try and get you where it's super crowded. Hold on. No, no, no. Who, who's playing today? Um, Revolutions on tonight. Oh, they're really? The headliner tonight. They're good. Yep, they're good. We, we saw them. Heard. They're gonna be here at the end of, of September. Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah. Saying. So, yes, what? Tell us a little bit about that's the stage over there. What was that? I'm sorry. I said, is that the stage back there? Yes, that's the stage back there. Wow. We sent Allie to Woodstock. Yeah. Um, well, with are, more clothes. Are you there alone, Allie? Are you there just by yourself, just walking no, around? No, my, my friend Bree is with me today. Really? Yeah, huh. well, I'm walking around. She's, she's um, so there's been some territorial fights over space, so she's guarding our area. Really? Territorial fights? That's pretty interesting. Oh, yeah, some, some lady thought, got real snippy earlier today. I thought the ganja makes people more chill. And I don't think she was smoking the ganja. Oh. So, um, so tell us a little bit about this music festival that you're on location. So you're in St. Pete. Um, that's on the the Gulf side, right over there. Yeah. Near Myers. That's that girl right there. Her name. That one. What? The one. Yeah. I'm sorry. I'm having a hard time hearing. Yeah. No. We can tell. We can tell. You're not oh, paying attention. A... So uh, we're in the VIP section. So I, we get our own entrance. Really. Oh yeah, see, it was very fancy. Oh, that's pretty interesting. How much did that cost? Uh, it, not as much as you think. I think it was like one fifty. Really? For, nice. for four days of VIP. Listen, yeah. I have an observation of the reggae concert. Go. So far, the reggae thing. Go. My uh -huh. observation is, the crowd does not look as though that I thought it would look. It's very. Okay. It's okay. very middle aged white. Oh yeah. It's very middle-aged white, so I find that very interesting. That's not what I expected. So, uh, yeah, yeah. Well, it's just it's just good vibes. That's all. Well, I, I mean, I'm not saying anything wrong with it. I just yeah. basically found that to be very interesting. Um, that's that's nice. Where is that? It's on the bay. Oh, that's so nice. So, yeah. can you hear? Can you hear the music from the bay layer in your kayak? You sure can. That'd be a perfect that thing. Perfect way. Yeah. I think, I, think that, I think we should all do next year. Um. Yeah, I'm going to put that. Hold on, I'm going to write that down right quick. Yeah. We'll just write that down. <laughs> I think Denise is going to have a great time. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Um. <laughs> so, Ali, we've asked you to join us today for a couple of things. One yeah. is to basically just check on you and make sure you're doing all right. So. I'm doing all right. Doing okay. Yeah. In a purely paternal way. Yeah. And I'm a what? In a purely paternal way. Yeah, just want to make sure you're all right. Oh, oh you're I, not, yeah, all right. I wanted oh. to get your facial expressions about the accident that took place at the winery today. What and accident? So, never mind. Oh, you don't know that? <laughs> never mind. an accident at the winery. Never mind. It's not that. Enjoy your time. It's all, it's all been taken care <laughs> uh, of. Yeah. You know I'm calling, I'm calling <laughs> Chrissy after this. Ah. Um, you're so easy. Yeah, there you go. Um, just want to make sure <laughs> really? you're all right. 
Um, we saw that you visited one of our loyal listeners, um, the Pops Pops woman. Did you go to a baseball game with Pops woman? No, just with Connie. No Pop. Yeah, that's what I meant. Pops yeah, woman with the yeah. man. Yeah, oh, with Connie. Pop. Yeah. So that's good. Who played the Orioles and who else? Sorry. The Orioles and who else? Uh, Orioles and Braves. Oh, good game. Oh, that's pretty cool. Atlanta's yeah, pretty. The Orioles Atlanta. looked fine and up until um, the first end of the first inning. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> that's so funny. So, other than that, we want to know if you have a word for us today. What do we have to look forward to today? More, more wine. That's for sure. <laughs> Is that wine in a Tito's glass? Am I doing it? Oh, yeah, it's in it. So, yeah, it's in a Tito's glass. Wine. Nice. They always look at me funny when I ask for wine. They're like. I'm like, what wine do you have? And they're like, white. I'm like, mm, okay. <laughs> That's, That's how pretty. this is good. All right. So do you have a word for us today? Sure. Um, is your podcast on explicit? Because I can totally give you a word. Yes, let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, we're gonna do we're gonna define marijuana. Marijuana. Oh, wow. I could probably define that. I'm pretty much going to be, I'm going to spell that and say okay. HGH. <laughs> um, so Mary J, Mary Jane, we go through a bunch of them. So yeah. can you use it in a sentence? Oh yeah. Yeah. You want to go ahead. Um, How about if you're in Florida in the rat or if you're in New, in New Orleans and the rats eat all the and, marijuana and the evidence out of the evidence room room. Of New Orleans PD, the yeah. rats ate all the marijuana. Yeah. That's a great, and that's, that's, that's true. That's more common than you think. Yeah. That's so that's funny. Good. That's good. Yep. That's cool. Um, th well, that's great. Marijuana. That's our word of the week. So spell it. Yeah, M A R E J O A N A. That's all she wrote. Schedule one controlled dangerous substance. Really? That's yep. what it is? Yep. Yep. Um, do you get arrested for that anymore? Isn't it legal everywhere? Uh, yeah, but, if it's uh, not legal, it's been decriminalized. Yeah. So it's, kind of, it's one of the same. Yeah. Yeah. You probably have to have kilos and kilos in a truckload. I think most jurisdictions now, if you don't have a, like 100 pounds. Yeah. Good to know, I guess. It, whatever yeah uh, you can't stay for too still for too long because you just get you know bowled over okay keep moving do not get bowled over do not get bowled over <laughs> well i'm gonna stand right here because i can still hear the music i can still hear you all right I think that's, I think all that's right. good who's the best band you've seen so far mm. dirty heads was really good yes last night and lupe fiasco was good yeah um uh, Original Whalers were just on, and they were really, they were really good this morning. Cool. Um, but I'm really just looking forward to like Soja and Revolution, Iration, and slightly stupid, I think, are tomorrow. And then you have the Marley Brothers on Sunday night. That's cool. Huh. That's funny because uh, you know, I listen to Kenny Chesney all the time on Sirius XFM, and Kenny Chesney's radio station has been nothing but Mishka all day playing playing reggae because of the i guess because of the uh concert going on down there oh that's awesome yeah good stuff so when will you be back i'll be back monday night monday right. night monday night um, back to work on tuesday all right buddy so here's a quick question for you um yeah. so our podcast today has been about a couple of things sussex county history and the other is local restaurants that we frequent and we enjoy so quick question for you. We let you throw something else out there is um, your favorite restaurant in the area that you and El Grotto go to that you go, that, um, yeah, your favorite restaurant. So we, so when we go out, we go to, we'll go to Somersaults that's down off of route one and um, uh, just outside the town of Bethany. So it's right in the same complex as Finn's and it's right next to Cottage Cafe and it's right outside of Sea Colony so it's like in that really central area they have great burgers uh, they're it's owned by two brothers John and Randy they're twins and I've known them since 2011 so they worked as bartenders when there was a Friday's up in Rehoboth and I got to know them there 
and then they opened their spot down in Bethany a few years ago, and I've just been going there ever since. So were, wasn't one of them a police officer? No, their cousin. Oh, their cousin their was cousin cousin. is a friend of mine. Their yeah. brother, brothers, John and Randy are brothers. Right, but yeah. their their cousin is my buddy. Oh, okay, gotcha. Yep. Right. So there we go. We've got a whole list of restaurants. Yeah. We've got Sussex County history. Yeah. And we've got marijuana. <laughs> yeah. We should be relaxed, chill, and yeah. smart. It's everywhere. Yeah, so there, there is a stand selling uh, mushrooms too. Wow, that's just brilliant. Stay away from that shit. Yeah, um, I read an article yesterday about Ozzy Osbourne that went out and had acid and smoked mushrooms yeah. one time, and <laughs> that basically he that a cow came over and he talked had a forty five minute conversation with a cow and gave up acid. So that's what he said. There you go. So here's a, here's what we can do. You can pull this whole thing Word. together if you. If, okay. if on this holiday weekend, St. Patrick's ah. Day, you do drugs, that was last weekend, right. by the way. If you do drugs, marijuana, don't drive, don't drive, but take a, them well. to one of those restaurants, yeah, and go eat and fill the munchies, and then talk about history. Yeah. Bingo. That's how you can do yeah. that. And don't get them from a sketchy drug dealer. Get them from an actual reputable drug dealer. Right. The, right. Just that whole, buy, just that whole statement. Yeah, don't buy roofies. Yep, because they always put you on the floory. Yeah, that's, that's been place now in Sussex County with fentanyl. Yeah. Man, that's messed up. It is All right. messed up. All right, Allie. So we have a couple minutes that we're going to wrap this thing up, and we know okay. how the way we wrap it up. So, all right. You think you can do you know, this? No. <laughs> I'm but I'm going to try. She's been drinking wine for a long time. Yeah, and she's yep. baked from secondhand smoke. There we go. So, Fung and Shui audience, we appreciate you listening to us today. We appreciate yeah. your time. Yep. And until yeah. next time, see, see ya. You've been listening to the Fung and Shui podcast. Stay tuned for new episodes every week.